Well, today is about fear, emotions, and false beliefs. That's our discussion today. And I wanted to do t what, today. What I want to do is it about the subject, Dave? Uh, yes, today. You want to ask a question about yesterday? Yes. Okay. Uh, just in regard to uh, spirit attraction yep. and one or two other associated. Um, for those that don't know me, I, my name's Dave. Um, I haven't read the forum uh, or anything like that the last week or so, um, and I have no wish to bring the forum into this venue. Um, on Friday, I, I spent the week at the sanctuary, and on Friday, um, I was walking in front of a, a bulldozer uh, trying to indicate a path for the bulldozer, bulldozer to clear. Uh, it was quite, um, quite emotional, uh, particularly uh, by, the, by the time we'd finished. I hadn't realised how much emotion I'd been feeling or taking on. I, still I haven't gotten rid of all of that emotion yet. But um, th the thing I want to get to is that the last couple of days after that, I was experiencing a lot of a lot of emotion and a lot of confusion, and I was trying my darndest to get into the emotion. And um, it wasn't until this morning, when I was um, sitting with Di, just just talking about it, and she was trying to help me get into the emotion, when I realised, or I asked myself the question, "Is there a spirit attraction happening here?" And when I thought a bit more about it, yes, there was, or or an, or an attachment. And the moment it came clear to me that there was a spirit attachment, that spirit left. And the heaviness and the confusion that I'd been feeling, um, it left me too. Yep. The confusion that I was having was, you know, do I really want to be part of this? It's all too hard. Am I doing the right thing? All those sort of things. Yep. So I don't know that the, the spirit's intent were malevolent or anything like that. Uh, I didn't, didn't follow that far. But uh, the moment the spirit left, it, um, I became much clearer in my thoughts and I felt, felt much brighter. Yeah. But the emotion still hasn't been dealt with that attracted the spirit. That's correct, yeah. yes. And the, the, beauty, the beauty of the spirit attraction is that if it heightens your sense of confusion. It heightens your sense of the emotion that you're actually experiencing. And that's not necessarily a bad thing if you deal with the emotion. So a lot of us, what we do when it comes to spirit attraction is we want relief from the spirit attraction. And I understand why, because many times the spirit attraction is even causing physical problems in our body, causing pains in our body and everything. But in the end, um, sometimes we're best sitting with the spirit attraction and just feeling the emotion to its full degree. This happened a few weeks with me ago with me where I was conscious that there were two men spirits with me who had been harmed by women in their life and they were with me, always trying to protect me from, from women who want to harm me. And, um, and what I did was, instead of asking them to leave, I just sat with their emotion and uh, uh, allowed them to project at me all of their intense emotions about women. And within about five seconds flat, <laughs> I got into, and I started writing, and I got into all these really deep core emotions which I could feel my attraction to inside of myself. Does that make sense? Now once I did all of that, then I was starting to process some of the emotion. So it actually helped me get into the real depth of the emotion. And then once I pro started processing the emotion, then there was less of an attraction. And then what happened is I eventually just talked to them about, well, you know, this isn't conducive now to me getting through all of my own emotion about, now we've got to separate and you deal with your emotion and I deal with mine. And once, uh, but, but what I'm saying is that once I allowed them, those spirits to be there, it actually helped me access my own emotion much more strongly. And my suggestion is the emotion of doubt, confusion, should I be on this path and all of those kind of emotions still now exist within you, but you feel temporarily relieved from them, so that feels quite good. But those emotions are still within you and still need to be accessed. The alternative way of handling it would have been allow those emotions to be present in you and start really connecting to them. 
how heavy you feel, how much doubt you feel about being on the path, on this divine love path, and how much doubt you feel about deal with dealing with your emotions and you know, how you know, all of those emotions which are still there inside of you, still percolating, if you allowed, them, allowed this spirit to really connect with those emotions and then write, write or whatever and just allow yourself to start purging those emotions, you probably find connecting to those emotions a lot easier than you will now find it because that spirit has now left you and now it's going to be a little bit more difficult for you to connect to some of those emotions. Do you follow me? Yeah, so the, the, the trigger's not, a, not there as intensely as it was. Yeah, that's right. And see, a lot of times what we're doing, and this is something I wanted to discuss with you today, a lot of times what we're doing is we're manipulating our life or controlling our life in such a way that we finish up trying to avoid a lot of our emotional experience. Do you follow what I mean by that? So, so, so in other words, why do I have a toilet that flushes? Well, because I want to avoid the emotional experience of smelling my own poo, basically, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Like, like, like we, don't want to, we don't want to feel that. We want to avoid that emotional experience. That's, I'm being blunt, but that's how it is. Now, so, so um, when, we, when we do things in our life in a bigger way, we're often creating our life around our fears, and we're not aware of it. Right? And so what we finish up doing is creating a comfortable life or a comfortable existence around our fears and we say, oh, I don't have any fears. And of course I don't have any fears because I've just created my entire life and my entire existence so that I don't have any of them triggered. Right? I don't have any of them easily accessible because I've now made my life in such a way that it was worked around all of these different fears that I had. Now the problem we're all going to face in the future is this with regard to fear. What we're going to face is that much of our comfortable life may disappear. Right? Then you'll really know what you're afraid of. Right? And often you'll be afraid of things that you never thought possible, including the smell of your own poo. Right? <laughs> you'll be afraid of that. Right? And so um, a lot of times you'll work your way through different things. Do you, you know, many of us don't think about things like this, but let's say earth changes do occur. And if earth changes do occur, how hard is it going to be to have a paper pulp mill? It's going to be pretty difficult, isn't it? Like, and, and are not very harmonious. Most of them are not very harmonious with divine love anyway, are they? Basically, because they, they're using huge amounts of chemicals to, to process paper. Which means the paper we use to wipe our backside with might not be available. So what are we going to do then? Tobacco leaves. <laughs> Tobacco leaves. <laughs> you see, a lot of the time what's happening it now is we're doing things to work our way out. You think there's whole industries on this planet that just work around an emotion, if you think about it. Whole industries. You can think of lots and lots of them. Like, for instance, the alcohol industry. That's a big one that works around a lot of emotions, doesn't it? Well, you think about it. Every time you come home from a hard day's work, what do you feel? And you can sit down, Dave. If you I have one other thing. Oh, sorry. Go on. Uh, just on that note, and in conjunction with um, with what happened on Friday, yep. uh, Daniel came up with the uh, the phrase to me yesterday, and I don't know whether it applies. Uh, he came up with the the phrase "transition to truth." So. It's not, um, it's not loving, as far as I can see, to, to destroy something that's living. However, um, somehow I feel we can't go from, from nothing to everything overnight. So in the example of the sanctuary, um, what is loving? For instance, uh, most of us would have come here to hear divine truth, in a sense, or to, to help us on the divine love path. But we would have come here in motor vehicles. Dave, can I answer some of these questions next fortnight? Because that's when I'm having a question and answer session. Okay. Um, yep. Because uh, th it brings up a lot of issues about what is loving, what isn't loving, how do I practice love in my day to day life, and all those things. And a lot of us feel impelled to compromise uh, divine truth because of the environment we're living in. And so there's a lot of questions that that also ri raises. And I can't really answer them all today when I want to do a talk about a different subject, if that's all right.